Hello, one and all, and happy fall 2022 anime season! Huzzah! And just holy freaking god above, I don't think I've ever seen a season this jam-packed with amazing top-tier anime. I honestly feel bad for the mid-tiers like Farming Skill, Beast Tamer, and Alchemist, uh, Novice Alchemist Management. Because those are series where I think on an average season they would do fairly well, but this season they're going to be crushed. They are going to be completely and absolutely crushed by the top-tier big-name anime. Spy Family, Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia, Mob Psycho, Bleach, Eminence, and Shadow. Oh, holy mother of God above. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I decided to make a quick video going over my thoughts on this upcoming anime season. But please let me know what you think down below. Uh, what are you excited about this season? What do you think I should watch? What do you think I should skip? And, you know, let's just get started with obviously the big hitter, Spy Family Season 2. Or Core 2, I guess. And I know this first season was incredibly, incredibly popular. I saw a few clips online, but I haven't actually watched the season itself yet. I have read the manga though, so I could actually go into Core 2 without much of an issue. And honestly, I might do that because, you know, this is the part that introduces Bond as a character, and I love him. He is so freaking adorable and such a great addition to the family. So yeah, Spy Family, that's definitely a maybe. I'll probably watch the first few episodes just because I really want to see Bond join the family. Uncle from Another World, another series I haven't actually watched yet, but I've heard very good things. Unfortunately, due to production issues, uh, episode 8 has been delayed by a very, very long time. So, you know, I have almost two months to watch the first seven episodes. Uh, that could be a binge. I might actually get around to that at some point. Okay, here we go. Chainsaw Man. This could honestly be the number one anime of this season. Even as packed as this season is with top tier items, Chainsaw Man could very well be number one. I mean, this series is gritty and dark and violent and disgusting and so, so disgusting. Seriously, do not watch this anime while you're eating or shortly after eating or before you eat. This me uh, Consider this anime to be basically medicine that you're not supposed to take within two hours of consuming food. That is how disgusting it can get. Seriously. Uh, now, the basic premise is Denji, our protagonist, is broke and in a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of debt to the point where he will do anything, literally anything for money. A dude says, hey, I'll give you a dollar to eat this cigarette. He does it. No questions asked. And thankfully, he has a pet chainsaw devil named Pochita. Now, in this world, devils are basically like accumulations of fear, and the more someone fears something, the more powerful the devil is. So, Pochita, a chainsaw devil, not that powerful. I mean, it is a common presence in, like, horror movies, but, you know, he doesn't seem all that strong. Whereas things like typhoons or guns have much, much stronger devils. Anyway, uh, Denji and Pochita hunt devils, and he sells the corpses for money... But then one day, things go very, very bad for him, and, you know, he kind of dies. But then Pochita saves him, and he becomes a human with a devil heart. He becomes Chainsaw Man, and he makes a promise with Pochita to live the life he always wanted, to sleep in a wonderful bed, to eat a full meal, maybe even, maybe even get a girlfriend. Maybe. We'll see how you do. And, yeah, like I said, a very gritty, dark series, and I'm very excited to see it. Uh, anyway, though, the next big hitter, My Hero Academia Season 6. And I just saw online the season's going to be 25 episodes, which, you know, just thank freaking God. Because this next arc, it is, it's dense. There is a lot going on, a lot of different fights in different parts of the world. And them trying to handle it in 12 episodes would be utterly and completely insane. Now, I know fans are still kind of mad at the anime creators because Season 5 was, you know, not great. Most agree that the villain arc was, you know, very poorly adapted, just didn't look great, and they cut out a lot of the important elements. I mean, that was because they were also working on the third movie at the same time as Season 5, and as far as I know, there's not a fourth movie currently in production. I might be wrong about that, so hopefully they can give the season the time and attention it deserves so that it can really, truly shine. Uh, next up, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3. I haven't actually watched Season 2 yet. I did watch Season 1, I liked it, but I just never got around to watching Season 2. So Season 3 is probably going to be a skip for now, unless I can do a real massive binge of Season 2 in the next, uh, you know, 10 days. <laughs> unlikely, very unlikely. I do have an, I do have an exam on Thursday. Uh, Bleach, holy mother of God, Bleach. Thousand Year Blood War. That is the most edgelord name I could possibly imagine. <laughs> Seriously, and oh, 
it's a four core series. Isn't a core like 12 or 13 episodes? So that means Bleach is going to run for an entire freaking year. Uh, okay, I mean, I was a bit concerned because this last arc, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it's it's busy. It is very, very busy. I saw something online before. That at one point, they were having like 80 voice actors at one time. They seriously hired basically all the voice actors in Japan for one freaking, you know, session. And that caused some major issues for, you know, literally every other anime out there. <laughs> so yeah, 52 episodes makes a lot of sense for such an utterly, ridiculously large arc. And honestly, I am hopeful for this. I mean, I saw the trailers. It looked really good. But also, I mean, the anime and manga ended quite a number of years ago. And I feel like there is a lot of anime fans right now who aren't really familiar with Bleach, who didn't grow up with it, and might not be all that interested in, you know, the final big arc of the series, especially a 52-episode arc if they don't really, you know, understand how they got to this point in the first place. I mean, with 52, I mean, with 52 episodes, I could spend, like, the first one or two basically recapping the entire series, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, it does really feel like Bleach might not be as popular as a lot of people are expecting. Like, I feel like it'll have really high numbers from, you know, long-term fans of the series. I mean, hopefully. The manga, the ending of the manga, was not well-received by fans. So, yeah, things with Bleach might not be entirely great, but... I guess we'll just wait and see how it goes. All right, then we have Eminence in Shadow, which honestly in any other season would be the number one anime without a doubt. This is such a good series. I've read the manga and it's so freaking amazing. Basically, our protagonist, Sid, uh, has this power fantasy of wanting to be the shadow, this mysterious figure who saves the world in the darkness at night. And during the day, he's a mild-mannered guy. He's a mob. He doesn't stand out at all. That's actually his hobby, trying not to stand out and seem weak in a crowd of people. <laughs> it is so weird. Anyway, though, then one day he realized, wait a second, I wouldn't be able to stop a nuclear bomb. So he attempts to learn magic in modern-day Japan, and it ends rather poorly for him, but then he gets reincarnated in another world that does have magic, and he very quickly becomes insanely, stupidly powerful. I'm not sure if it's a result of reincarnating, a result of his intense training, or a result of him using, you know, uh, modern-day science with magic, but regardless, he is stupidly overpowered, even as a child. And then one day he comes across a girl in the cage, frees her, and explains to her that she is a descendant of the heroes who sealed away the demon lord, and that she was kidnapped by the Diablo cult, who want to use her blood to revive the demon lord, and that he is forming Shadow Garden, an organization that will work in the shadows to protect the people from the Diablo cult and their evil plans. There's just a couple problems with this. First off, Sid is making all this up on the spot. He does not believe it at all. He's basically just role-playing at this point. Secondly, the girl he saves, who is later renamed Alpha, believes it. She 100% believes it and immediately swears to spend the rest of her life serving him and helping him in his goals. <laughs> As do the next dozen girls he recruits. And finally, and most importantly... Sid might actually be a god. That's not some, you know, late series spoiler, but he is never wrong. He is never wrong. This whole spiel he came up with about the Diablo cult and all that, he's right. He's right about every freaking detail. He even got the name of the organization right. They actually call themselves the Diablo cult. I mean, not the most original name, but hey, he got it right. Huzzah! And this isn't a one-time thing either. At one point later on, a girl gets kidnapped, and his whole organization, which has gotten fairly large by that point, is like, okay, but we've narrowed it down. She's either in location A or location B. Sid randomly throws a dagger at a map and says, she's there. Nowhere near either of the two locations that his organization spent a great deal of time tracking down. And he's right. That's actually where the girl is. And when they go to the fort, he gets lost and runs headfirst into the leader of the organization or at least the highest ranking dude currently in that base. So yeah, Sid might actually be a god who's subconsciously warping reality to fit his illusions, even though he doesn't actually believe them to be true. It is such a weird series. It is such an insane series. And despite all of this madness and insanity, it is a series with really, really good combat. So yeah, this series, any other season, would be number one without a doubt. But this season, even with all the other top hitters, I still think this could be 
second, third, maybe fourth best. That's that's my bet. That is definitely my bet. All right, then we have the series I am most excited about this season. Welcome to Demon School, Aruma Kun Season 3. Oh my god, I love the first season. I absolutely love the first season. And then season two just blew the first one completely and utterly out of the water. Evil Aruma, that was so amazing. That was such an amazing arc. Especially because, you know, even though he was evil, even though he was his darkest self, he was still himself. He was still nice to people. He still helped them pick up trash and do all that. But he was just more assertive, more confident, and willing to do what he had to do to get what he wanted, both for himself and for his friends. And that is honestly one of the best arcs I've ever seen in all of anime. Seriously, top five for me. Absolutely top five. And I'm so excited for a third season. Hopefully we see some more of Evil Aruma. <laughs> Though, you know, even without that, he has grown enough confidence through his time in the demon world, through his time in fighting, where he's able to actually stand up for himself a little bit more. So maybe, you know, his evil persona and his normal persona will merge a bit together as the series moves forward. One can only hope. Also, everyone has some insane costumes, and apparently they're going to be hunting in the woods for survival. So interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Alright, next up, Reincarnated as a Sword. Now, I've had a lot of people recommend this one for me, but I haven't actually had a chance to read the manga yet, so I'm not sure about that one. Honestly, any other season, this would definitely be a watch for me, but with so much else going on, I can't really make any promises. A basic premise is, you know, like the title says, a dude reincarnates as a sword and basically becomes the weapon for a slave, and together they have an incredible journey across the land. Good for them! Oh, I've somehow gotten stronger when I improve my farm-related skills. Uh, this one's, I've actually read the manga for this one before. Uh, it's fairly good, typical storyline. Uh, dude is, you know, really, really good at farming. And then one day when he maxes out his farming skills, it causes all the stats to max out. And he becomes stupidly, ridiculously overpowered. And of course, they do that stupid trope where it takes him a really freaking long time to notice. Seriously, over and over again, he's like, hey, it couldn't have been that hard. After all, I'm just a farmer. There's no way I could deal with something that was, you know, an actual massive threat to the world. And he could. He could absolutely freaking do that. And honestly, just his love of farming is what really sells the series for me because he was just so obsessed with making his crops as perfect and amazing as possible. There's a whole arc where he goes to a town that is world famous for how good their asparagus is. And like everyone in it is obsessed with asparagus. <laughs> it is honestly hilarious. It is honestly freaking hilarious and worth a watch just for that one arc. Uh, oh, I'm the Villainous, so I'm taming the final boss. Now, this first episode actually just aired today. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I'm always excited for a Villainous anime to appear. For those of you who don't know, uh, reincarnating as a Villainous is an incredibly popular uh, subgenre of Isekai right now. I can probably name like 20 different manga that follow that premise, and for good reason. You know, the typical Isekai storyline, oh, you are the hero. You've been chosen by God to defeat the Demon Lord, so there is no way you can fail. Whereas being reincarnated as a villainous basically means, oh no, destiny, fate, and the world itself says you must fail, you must lose, and what's more, everybody already hates you. So it's basically an isekai on hard mode, and the protagonist slash villainous isn't just handed the solution on a silver platter. She needs to actually think and put in the work to figure out how to solve the problems and not, you know, die, not be executed, or whatever awful fate usually awaits the villainous. So yeah, I'm probably going to give this one a watch when I get a chance. Not really sure when that's going to happen. All right, next up, more than a married couple but not lovers. This just seems so overwhelmingly cliche to me. I mean, seriously. The high school says, okay, we're going to pair up all the students and force them to live together as pseudo-couples to teach them how to be in a relationship. And the two students who are complete opposites and hate one another are paired up and they're like, hey, we don't want to be a couple anymore, so we become the best couple in the school. If we get the highest ranks, we'll be allowed to switch partners. For some reason, and obviously, obviously, as they pretend to be a couple, they'll eventually end up falling in love, and then when they get permission to change partners, they'll both agree, but then they'll turn around and run back and embrace one another in a grand romantic gesture. Yeah, I haven't even seen a trailer for this series, I can already tell you how it's going to end. Uh, but you know, a cliche romance thing, it, it can be fun, so that's a maybe for me. Alright, next up, we have Beast Tamer. Now, weirdly enough, I actually started to read this manga, but ended up dropping it, which is very unlike me. I never drop a series once I've started it. Seriously, uh, wasn't particularly bad, but I don't know, it just didn't really, you know, grip me all that well. 
uh, like More Than a Married Couple, it's very cliche. Basically, the protagonist, Rain, is kicked out of the hero's party because they believe that he is useless and not contributing at all, unaware that he is, in fact, super important, and the only reason they're not dead a thousand times over. <laughs> Seriously, I've seen this premise so many freaking times. Uh, but yeah, it turns out that even though he's a beast tamer, which is considered a weak profession, he is really freaking good at it. A normal beast tamer is like, okay, you know, I can tame one, maybe two animals, but only certain types of animals, only if they feel like it, and only if it's on a certain day. Whereas Rain is like, okay, I just tamed ten bees, three birds, two ants, five dogs, and a partridge in a pear tree. So yeah, he is incredibly powerful. Though just not physically, thankfully that's all fixed, when he meets a cat beastkin who is incredibly powerful, and taming her makes him incredibly powerful. So, yeah, that settles all of his issues and he instantly becomes incredibly broken. I mean, he's already broken, but just even more so at this point. Alright, then we have Management of Novice Alchemist. This is very low on the popularity list and doesn't look like anything all that impressive, but I'm almost certainly going to watch it simply because it seems like a very chill slice of life, you know, series. A uh, girl graduates from alchemy school and ends up in the middle of the boonies out far, far away from civilization and has to basically make life better for everyone around her. That feels like a very chill series, and I feel like, you know, every anime fan should have one chill series every season. Something they can watch after a long, exhausting day to relax and just have some fun. So, yeah, that's definitely a watch for me, as weird as that might sound. Uh, also, there was Duel Masters Win, which, interesting. I mean, I like the original Duel Masters anime when I was a kid, so... Uh, that might be a maybe for me. I'm really not sure about that. Oh, actually, it's already aired four episodes. So, yeah, that's probably a skip for me now I think about it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, we also have movies and OVAs, though. Uh, in terms of movies. Okay, there are actually some really good looking anime movies coming out this season. Awesome. Uh, first off, Reincarnate as a Slime, Scarlet Bond. I have some issues with this one, I really do, because they're introducing Benny Morrow's long-lost brother as the big hook of this movie, and it's like, seriously, Benny Morrow, you've never mentioned your brother before in the light novel, the manga, the spin-off manga, the other spin-off manga, or the other other spin-off manga? That feels weird to me, that feels very weird to me, and just, ugh, I don't like it, I really don't like it. I mean, the big thing about Reincarnated Slime is just seeing the progress, seeing the growth, seeing how things change and evolve over time, and seeing how far the characters have come. I mean, even Slime Diaries was cool because you would see, oh, Geld, you know, he was a cannibal when we first met him, eating his own people. Now he's growing garden and being an adoptive father figure to the little goblin girl. It's freaking adorable. But a movie that is, you know, completely cut off from the actual storyline, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that one. I really don't know how I'm going to feel about that one, but... You know, Slime has impressed before, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Sword Art Online. I still need to watch the other uh, progressive movie, but I heard good things about it. I've heard it was better than a lot of the Sword Art Online contents. Uh, oh, Suzume. This is from the guy that created uh, Weathering With You and Your Name. So, yeah, this is a watch. This is absolutely a watch as soon as it comes to the U.S., whenever that is. I remember seeing the trailer, just the music is so hypnotic and enchanting, and I'm so, so excited for it. Okay, I haven't actually heard about this one before. The Tunnel of Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes, a magical tunnel that grants a wish in exchange for aging you. Uh, that could actually be really interesting. Uh, reminds me of, oh, what was that one called? Uh, yeah, here it is, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, that's what it's called. Where the thing is, if they can get to the center of this weird other world, their wish will be granted, but with a terrible, terrible cost. Because wishes always come with a terrible cost. Alright, then we have a really weird duo. To me, the one who loved you, and every you I've loved before. Which is basically uh, parallel movies, uh, connected movies. It's weird. It is really, really weird. From what I've read online, uh, basically... These movies take place in parallel worlds, but the characters are able to travel between those worlds and therefore go from one movie to the other. And actually, the order in which you watch the movies will also somehow change the ending of them, which so weird, so bizarre, and I'm so excited to watch this at some point down the road. Seriously, that sounds absolutely amazing and like such an absolute mind trip. All right, in terms of OVA, there's only one I'm really looking forward to, Arifuretza. The Miraculous Meeting and the Phantasmagorical Adventure. 
Now, this is apparently based off of uh, one of the light novels, not one of the ones I've read. One of the prequel light novels where Hajime somehow, someway finds a way to meet with uh, the actual, you know, liberators. The people whose ancient magic he's been using all along. So neat! I mean, that's definitely going to be a very interesting uh, union, or I guess reunion, because Hajime did meet the one guy's skeleton and did find the other girl who was, you know, trapped in a golem. So, yeah, I'm very excited for this. It actually came out, I think, today, so... Yeah, now I'm just waiting for someone to put it online so I can watch it. Huzzah! Anyway, yeah, those are my thoughts on this upcoming anime season. Like I said, there is so, so much to watch. It is actually unbelievable. And I'm very excited to watch a lot of this. But let me know what you think down below. Which of these animes are really worth watching? Which of these are you going to skip? And which ones do you think are going to be dark horses and end up way more popular than anyone could ever imagine? But let me know what you think down below. And until next time, peace!